Okay, I think that's it. Okay, good evening everyone. <clears throat> Hopefully someone's watching. I haven't been on in a while. <clears throat> I've been working on my master's degree. I don't think I'm ever going to finish it though. <laughs> I had time off. I don't think it's ever going to get done. It's <laughs> and so, yeah, so I don't think it's ever going to get finished. So, and then, um, actually shave. You guys might notice I've shaved, but I was going to have a goatee and then like, you know, then I could have like a hat on and be like middle-aged dude, you know, circa 2013. <laughs> you know, the hat on backwards, yeah. hang out downtown. But I'm not going to do that, so I shaved and everything. So anyways, um, our uh, co-host is a little bit late. Uh, Junker, he's a little bit late. But anyways, um, and it looks like Governor Walls has extended the shelter in place. And you guys might have been a lot like me. It felt like a parole hearing. You thought it was going to end right there. Were you guys like me? Thought it was going to end, but it looks like he's extending it out to May 4th. And um, it's like May 4th. And uh, so, whoa! Someone's here. Our co host showed up. He's right on time come again. On, come on. Is that he? Right in time, yes. Your our pay's going to get docked. Get the hell down. <laughs> yeah, that's so your like, pay. We <laughs> were here at 7, 6.52. I was here when I was Yeah, he days. was on time. Well, our co host. George, did George say if you're 10 minutes or if you're 5 minutes early, you're late? Yeah, oh yeah. That's right. Hi. So What's well, happening? Wow, well, we're just starting the Eric show. Eric Cole's here. Yeah, I shave. I'm just saying how I shave. Wow, well, he yeah. looks like a million bucks. I still got complaints about the gray hair. I know, it's age yeah. though. And anyway, so we're talking about the shelter in place. It's like sitting in front of a uh, parole board here. Right? Yeah. Oh, but nice. anyway, so he's extending it out to May 4. At any rate, uh, but, and then he's, ex he, he's comparing us to other states and how much better we are, and it, it kind of reminded me of the, the NCAA tournament, since we don't have a tournament going on, you think how much better we are. That's good. The other, I'm only put one glove on. Good drinks, huh? I'm only put one glove on today, you because I think drink, we're right? getting there. Michael Jackson. Yeah. yeah. Do you want something to Beat drink? it, beat it, beat you it. Want a, you want a drink? Oh, sure, thank you. You want... Don't, don't drink the hams down there. I'm yeah, don't drink the hams. <laughs> do, you want, do you want some Cuban rum in there? I don't want any rum, but thank you. Well, we have Cuban rum. I think it's legal. Can I, can I do just, this? Can I pour that right in there? You don't yeah, care? that's fine. There's yeah. a nice yeah, okay, eyeball so, you got there with some ice. Hmm? Okay, so, now we're just getting off of Easter week. And I was going to talk a little bit about my, my trip to Israel as long as... Okay, so, wow. and this, th this was a few years ago. And, and one thing that happened when, when I was there, and hopefully my friends that I met in uh, Israel are watching, at any rate... Um, and, and not to pick, it, it, well, I'm not going to pick on nationalities, but I, I went and I actually only spent $19 a night at an Airbnb, but I'd go down to the, the hotels and I'd, I'd use their concierge and I would uh, book tours. But one of my tours was to go on a trip to the West Bank or Palestine, depending on who you are, and we'd go to uh, Bethlehem. And wow. we would go see the manger. And, and uh, I'm guessing it's not the same one, but go ahead. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> at any rate, it was, it was uh, well, at any rate, and so we, we'd stand in line, and um, certain groups of people from different countries, and Americans usually pretty good in standing in line to go to, to at any rate, see the manger. And... Other countries, these people would go walk in front of us. And so I wasn't having this. I was not going to allow this to happen. And, and you know, so what I did with my group, I, I you know, there's railings on each side. You're going here. And I said, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to 
<laughs> have this line right here, and we are not going to allow people to pass us up anymore. And uh, people from the Orient, I'm not going to say which country, because there's a lot of controversy mm -hmm. involved with them right now. They were, you know, jawing at us and everything. And, and so, and I was getting really mad at these people that were trying to get in front of us to go see the birthplace of Jesus. Were, and I, were, well, I was getting mad. Were budging? Yes. Were budging what? Yes, and I was getting mad at these people to go see the birthplace of Jesus. And, I, and, I, and after a while, I felt kind of bad about that because to go see the birthplace of Christ himself. But then I thought about this. Well, Jesus lost his temper at times. <laughs> you know, when he went into, you know, and he, and he flipped over the tables and everything and, and said, you know, you're making a mockery of my father's house. But this one guy that was in my group, he was a kind of a small guy, and he was like 40, small Jewish man, and he was a, a heart surgeon. And he thought that was so great that we were standing up to these what he thought were bullies, and from then on, I was his best friend. Because <laughs> probably the first time in his life, maybe he uh, was, you know, how many people, people were budging? Like, how many, like, well, wow. a lot of them. I'm not going to say which country they're from, but whenever I've been anywhere in the world, well, give us a hint where they, well, they, they were from. They were shorter. No, they were shorter, and they're from okay. the Orient. Oh, okay. Might be in the news a lot lately without. Uh, of saying where they're from, but that happened a lot. And then when I was up on the Lebanese border, Scott, the same thing happened. We were going to see the grottos, and um, same thing happened. Same guy was along, and we made this line. We were not going to allow people to go budge in front of us to the see these forces. grottos. Well, yes, like and that. this guy was saying, so I'm me, well... Well, he, he was, we drew this line from railing to railing. No one was going to get in front of us. And he called me crazy or something and uh, some other names. Well, crazy meaning I don't think you should be allowed to step in front of us. And so that, that's some of the experiences I uh, had in uh, Israel. But actually our one tour guide was really good um, when we were seeing the uh, Golgotha there where Christ was crucified. Um, he was really good. He didn't let people get in front of our, our and I tipped him pretty well. That's why so, I, don't, I don't leave the country. I know you guys leave well, the country. Well, You've you been places to go. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. afraid. Yeah, okay. Well, Scott, this is your favorite part. Oh, no. Oh, and this is, came down from the uh, headquarters here, the top five Yacht Rock songs. Yacht Rock? Yacht Rock. Well, everyone's kind of stressed out, kind of the calm. Oh, jeez. And uh, Saturday, I was You might really have to help me with this, Paul, because okay. Yacht Rock? Yacht Rock, the really calm. Give me that beers and wait for me here. <laughs> I'll take it. It's taking way too long. Take it. <laughs> Give me that yacht. You want some, you want some uh, Cuban rum here? I'm going to do oh, the hands, That's all I need. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, forgot to, I forgot to put our tip jar up here. So we got Firefox? Yeah, that'd be funny. All right. I don't Tip know. jar. <clears throat> we haven't done a show in a week. Maybe. Oh, that's oh, good. Right here. I think yeah. we're it's colder than hell. Yeah, okay. So, number five, and I think, uh, well, uh, Michael McDonald could be every... Oh, every his place? Yeah, every Yacht Rock You song. don't know where you're... <laughs> huh? What's, which one is it? What a Fool Believes. Oh, what a fool. How does that one go again? What a Fool Believes. Oh, do I have to do his voice? No, nah, yeah. <laughs> what is that called? Falsetto? Uh, what does he say? What a fool believes. Oh, That's you know the side, people. You know. Mm -hmm. God, you can it's only listen. It's been a off tonight. The okay. Doobies. He was the a Doobie Brothers. Brothers. Yes. song in 1978. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Number four. And England Dan, John Ford Coley. Oh, I'd really love, love to Dan see you tonight. tonight. Really love to see you tonight. And I'm, I'm, not, about, I'm not talking about moving in. in. I never understood. And I don't them. want to. Ch I never knew what them words were. It's like oh, finally I, got a stereo that actually sounded good, you know? And then they, you could understand the I'm word. I'm talking about moving in. I love in I love the name. Isn't that cool? Just England Dan and John Ford Coley. Something it just sounds like a yeah. really cool name. And player, this is a player. So Baby, come back. Baby, come back. You got it. Any kind of fool could see. I love that song. That was, every one of us have tried that song. I guarantee it, huh? That's a big Okay, now, player. They had a couple good hits. 
Yes, he did. And now you have to have an ambrosia song. Oh, ambrosia. ambrosia. What is, hey, what does ambrosia mean? How can I feel? Ambrosia is the food of the gods. I love it. See that guy? See, it? See what an educated You're man. the only woman. You're the only woman. Oh, how's that How much I feel would be another one, but then you're the only one. That I'm dreaming of. Oh, you're the only woman that I... Oh, I like that song. Woman. That is a good one. You know, that I'm dreaming of. Oh, yeah. That, I got it all set up. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Now, Hall and Oates. Uh, she's gone? No. Yes. No yes, way. Yes, you got it. Okay. That's, that's Nelly's favorite song. Yes, I know. So we had to add that now. Okay, so, no, but there was no that? bread song on here. Oh, come on. You got to get bread. Oh, there would be one on there. I would give everything for you, bread. No, I'd give everything I own. I'd give everything I own. I would give anything. You know, I had a girlfriend once. Once? And uh, we, we had an outing. Did and you have a kid with her? No, no kid. This one escaped that. And uh, she still don't have any kids. But I, we, we broke up, and I, I, I got a little cassette player, and I bought the, the CD cassette, the, the bread, and I put that song, and I had arrows going into her bedroom with candles, you know, so she could play that song, and you know, I would give anything, and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I did that. Romantic. No, it was terrible. Did it work for you? No, it, it worked for about another month, and that was it. That was the end of the road. But she, yeah. had a, she did your job for a while. Oh, the trolley. Yeah. Yeah. We got to get Dick Zimmerman here. Uh, talked to him today, but then he had to go before I invited nice him. They're all nice girls. On the, the show here. I don't think he has a Facebook. The show. Zim. Yeah, so we got to have him on here. Well, Scott, Well, at least you got the songs, and now we got to mm-hmm. introduce yeah, you. Yeah, we uh, have our. Neighbor. Everyone knows um, that I've known him for. We're only 39, of course. Fair but, Meadows uh, people, right here. Mm-hmm. Okay, man. Well, Cheers, thanks, Scott. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Good luck, Mr. Thorpe. Yeah, uh, well, we can't shake hands because, uh, where am I supposed to look? Oh, this, here's our camera over here. You see this great tripod over here? We have the, the, the box. This is where a high-budget thing is. It's like right Wayne's right. World and uh, Garth <laughs> or whatever, right? From Aurora, <laughs> Illinois. All right, I'm looking right here. I got it. Yeah, so. Full That's disclosure. We're, full disclosure, we've known each other for probably almost 50 years. Even 50 though years. we're 39, yeah. we've known each other for... Who's old? Months. You're younger here. You're older than him, though. So here's the deal. My dad gets the job. I'm living in Bloomington. I'm a five-year-old. I probably don't even know my dad's a football coach at the time. Wow. He gets the job in uh, 1971, and apparently he was driving every day to two-a-days because we got a house. We closed on the house, and then the very next day I was in Lily Lake Elementary School in kindergarten. No way. So wow. I meet, meet Bobby Clark first. And the very next person I think I met was the next day I met you, or did I meet your brother John? You were you know, I think we were, we were together. It was in uh, the the park behind. There used to be a pond That's right, down there. You oh, were yeah. looking for frogs or something uh, like yeah. that. Fifty years ago, forty nine years. Yes. ago. And your parents and his parents are still there. Correct. Awesome. I was at my parents' house uh, three hours ago checking nice. in on. Them. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Oh no, no, that, that's in my. What's what's great, my my. Dad and, and, and George are on the opposite yeah. ends of the political <laughs> spectrum. We won't go. Yeah. Who is that? They, they awesome. love to. They've been chawing at each other for more in good nature. So there. So, but as our backyard goes out, it almost intersects your backyard. Mm-hmm. So Miles and I have been friends, and your late brother. Mm-hmm. We know growing up, we had so many good times when we were kids. Yeah, so that was a great neighborhood. There was yeah. a lot of people yeah. and a lot of good women. lived up there. A lot of good looking women. Yep. Yeah. And uh, growing girls, up, girls, I guess they were at the yeah, time because we were in the 60s or 70s. Angie, Will. Just slow down over there. Yeah, yeah. slow down. <laughs> but Eric and I would, would read the, the Mad Magazines. And I, oh, and wow. I had to put these up here because <laughs> Eric, they're hardcover now, but Eric and That's I would read the, yeah. the, the Sad Spy time. versus Spy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's probably in some of those, but Dave Berg was always my favorite. So, um, and you got everything in. Well, I know all the, the so so yeah so Eric uh, uh, 1982 you practically single handedly led the team to the first no oh, it no. wasn't we were it wasn't tennis or golf <laughs> I mean it was football you had to have like 30 guys and I was one of many but yeah that was a lot of fun mm-hmm. who were the big running backs then uh, their starting backfield was uh, Scott Clemens and Matt Hoskin. Wow. And then the, the, they were seniors. And then my class, juniors, we had really good running backs. Dave Woodback, Mike Horn, Tark Sharif were back. So we had a lot of depth at running back. And you're still in contact with a lot of these guys because you're uh, with the, the Pony Touchdown Club. So yeah. You'll... Yeah. I mean, well, I think just in general, the, the, I try to remain in contact. And now more than ever with, with tweet or what do you call it, with uh, texting and Facebook. Mm-hmm. 
it's so much easier, you know, like if this were 30 years ago, you'd lose track of people and you wouldn't see them again. But I try to remain in contact with my, my college football teammates, my high school teammates, and yeah. Okay. Yeah, and okay, so we kind of running. Okay, and uh, one thing, uh, you uh, hosted a foreign exchange student, I remember, because I worked up at the high school oh, yeah. quite a bit, and uh, I this was an interesting story you had posted on Facebook. Well, Tell us about that. Well, I mean, it's, it's really, I mean, it depends on how much you want to know about it, but so <laughs> we wanted to get it. First off, I refused for years, and my wife wanted to do it forever. And then uh, my friend Tom Widener on the city council, uh, you know, a partner in Eckford Glamours, he had a gal from Italy, and he said it was the greatest thing ever. So I capitulated, and uh, we agreed to do it, and we ended up with a young, by, young man by the name of Miguel, Miguel uh, Villancaravias from Madrid. Nice. And he comes over, cut, funny story, he comes over, and he's like, I want to play American football. And I'm like, all right, let's see when you get here. So he shows up, he's 150 pounds. Wow. He can't even hold the football right. He couldn't catch it. And I'm like, no, let's let's do your football, which is our soccer. Yeah. They're already two weeks into the season. I call Ricky Michael up. I'm like, is it okay if you just let this kid come out and put him on the JV team? He's like, ah, don't worry about it. it happens all the time. So he shows up, and the first scrimmage, he just dominates. No way. Yeah, then he's in the starting lineup. He's first team <laughs> All-State, and Stillwater wins the state championship. And come on. Oh, yeah. So, but, but I actually remember. Well, in America, I, I remember yeah. in yeah. 1975 there was a, a Danish kid, Soren Gam. Soren Gam, but he was all state. Uh, well, uh, funny story too. Yeah. He came over, and that was when everybody was having the square toe, and they were kicking straight on. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Cox was the kicker of the Vikings, and then Whoa. Rick Danmeyer, and he actually wanted to kick soccer style. It was 1975. And he came over and uh, wanted to try American football, and I think my dad tried to talk him out of it. And uh, he saw some guys kick, and he said, I think I can do that. And he was first team all stage. Jeez. I, I, I don't even remember that. <laughs> yeah, so. I, I think I did do that. From Denmark. <laughs> and then, bring it full circle, uh, Cutter, uh, not Cutter, I'm sorry, Popper Schmidt ends up playing basketball at UW River Falls and ends up getting cooked up with Soren Gam. Okay. And so Popper went over and played a year of pro basketball in Denmark because Soren awesome. Gam's like reaching out to Stillwater people and he's huh. a successful businessman. Yeah. I didn't know that. Popper did that really? Yeah. Wow. And, uh, did awesome. this just thing uh, kind of foreshadowing to 19, so I guess it would have been late November. Um, you were on the cover of the Gazette with that 1975 team. Weren't you? Oh, I would have been the ball boy. But the ball so, boy. Like, you look at the, the team ball picture, boy. I'm yes. the little kid in the corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And then wow. this was for, but that <laughs> was the same week as Education Week. And then low down in the corner, it was Miss Stevenson, Mrs. Stevenson's um, third grade class. Oh, that was that, your picture was in yes, it. Yes, I that was out well, No way. Yeah, <laughs> no, you, you pointed that out. I didn't point that. You pointed out, like, at, at some time even here. after, it was... Um, uh, me, Jeff Paulson, Jeff Paulson, yeah. Brent Larson, Brent Larson, all really, all I really like, yeah. the Braywood boys, no, yes, the Braywood uh, boys. Lancaster, Lancaster, and he lived out more towards uh, the golf course. Right? Yes, and so there was a few of us then who, and maybe there was some. I, I think that might have been it, though. Uh, we were third graders, ended up as uh, seniors. That was fourth graders. The, okay. uh, uh, 1984 team. So you had been on. I already there. graduated because you. I yeah. graduated in the. You graduated in the spring, and you guys played in the fall. But if you want to bring it full circle, with cut here. So there's also, if you look on there, there's a picture of his old man, the late Chalk, because your dad uh, yeah. totally okay. outstepped his bounds in a yes. lovingly way by getting up in front of the school at the pep fest and said, "I hereby." Declare schools closed on Monday, and like oh. the superintendent, and everybody's like, What the hell is Jack doing? Shut the hell up. <laughs> so, anyway, just kind of side note, to side note, bring, kind of bring all the circle yeah, for that everybody. Was a great story, so, that's man. all on that front page of the Gazette. But anyway, Mazda. Oh, that was, that we just, we learned that later after we looked at it. We no, didn't you brought time. that up. It did, it oh, okay. did dawn on me. Oh, wow, that's I'm into that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was like, <laughs> what is that old parchment paper? <laughs> yeah, it's good. It was like out of, out of Egypt or something. <laughs> The pharaohs were reading it. Hey, what that. month would that be in, in 75? Uh, November, probably November, November 18th, okay. 75, okay. November 20th, right around there. And then when we were in it in, seven, in 82, in the first year the Metrodome was built, that definitely was played on November 20th. And then ever, like when you guys probably played, it was after because 
that's when they started the region playoffs when they ex- you played more games. So you guys probably played like the you probably played like you probably went Thanksgiving and I think well, you did because tw- I came a, home for that from playing college football and you guys were playing on Thanksgiving. Or the twenty fourth of November is my dad's birthday. Oh, oh, okay. So mm-hmm. then the season goes a week later once they started the expanded playoffs. What was the big banner when you walked in? What did it say, Miles, in the Metrodome? Oh, we like it here. Yeah. E.T. Go Dogs. Oh, that's when I played. Yeah, that's when when I was, did it. Yeah. That was the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> my, yeah, my girlfriend at the time was a very creative cheerleader, and she made sure oh. I got way more credit than I deserved. Yeah, anyway. my year was the first year of the expanded playoff, and so there was a lot of... What's he going to Why do you remember that? I don't know. It just came to my head. <laughs> it was just clever. It took me about five minutes to figure it no, out. No, <laughs> the movie was just out then. The movie just came out, right? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Talk a lot about the great <laughs> Oh, the no years. But, uh, maybe uh, our our people watching they'll probably want to hear what's your, going on. Where I'll let a yeah. lawyer, Eric, and thanks for stopping by here. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, you're a lawyer, and uh, you it, it sounds like uh, your uh, practice has been cut back a little bit. Uh, well, I think you know it's, we could have a whole we could talk for hours on just what's happening in the law since the mm-hmm. but I don't want to do that. But but first things first is that. Like the court system just decided flat out, we aren't doing some things. Okay, we're not going to do an eviction. We're not going to do a mortgage foreclosure. So for anybody out there listening, I don't know if I'm telling you not to pay your rent or whatever, but uh, you're probably going to be okay for a while. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, the word hit me is, see, my practice, Miles, is um, criminal defense, as you all know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't like to represent criminals. I just represent good people. That you haven't mistakes. represented me on that, yeah. that thing, so and don't make mistakes. Yeah. 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 People, great people make mistakes. So yeah. I don't have to represent gangbangers or. I mean, most of the people I represent are simple DWIs mm-hmm. or you get in trouble at work and you steal some money or you get in an argument with your wife and it gets out of control or something. So those type of cases are are taking a hit right now. DWIs for sure. I mean. Mm-hmm. So that's a big part of my business is cut back. Um, when you don't have bars and restaurants open. You're not going to have DWIs. Mm-hmm. So what I'm seeing a little bit more now, it's kind of interesting. I'm seeing a little bit more domestic assaults hmm. because people are, you know, Home stuck with each other. Yep. And I think, like my my fellow lawyers that do divorce work, I anticipate their their practices are going to explode here in a while. It's just not happening right now. But um, eventually, I will come back. I mean, I, I you know, criminal defense is something that um, there were guys like me hanging outside the Roman Forum hustling work. You know, there's always going to be people getting in trouble. It's just that right now it's just, it's slowed down. So I've become a part-time epidemiologist and I'm reading charts on, you know, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Is the courthouse even open? Um, good question. So <clears throat> there are people that are currently in custody and they're continuing to hear those cases. Here's where it gets really interesting is that uh, there's like speedy trial demands. If you're in custody, you're allowed to have a trial within a certain amount of time. Our governor pretty much said no jury trials. You know, so we judge, right? So, but so that's and that was kind of the thing in in the Wisconsin deal. I don't know if you guys followed it politically. Um, I got to put out a plug here for Jill Karofsky, who was my good friend in law school, who just won the Supreme Court race in Wisconsin. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But the whole issue was over there. Is so the Supreme Court in Wisconsin said we will not have jury trials. So we do not want to have people coming in up to sit next to each other. But then they had the whole issue about making a vote. So it's kind of an interesting flip side. Um, I don't know what's going to happen on a lot of these things. My cases aren't a big deal because when you don't represent hardcore criminals as much, um, most of my cases, I had 40 cases in the pike miles, and the court administrator just called up and said, we are absolutely canceling every one of yours. But that doesn't mean they go away. They just cancel so, the, the, the postpone, postpone. I should have used the word postpone. Yeah. So I'm going to start getting notices here that my cases are going to come back up in, in June, July. So what I've done here is I've used it as an opportunity to reach out to my prosecutor buddies and say, Hey, it's a it's a it's a fire sale. Yeah. Let's get let's do let's it. get stuff done. And let's we're starting them to, out. We're, right, so I'm starting to get some good deals with my clients. And a lot of my clients are they're going through tough times as it is. And it, I just want to take one more thing off their plate, like say, hey, let's let's get this done. That kind of thing. Can no. they do it on like Zoom or anything? Any? Oh, that's what I'm sorry. That's what they are. Zoom. So like when you go in, when you go in, like if I, except for literally, I had a court appearance yesterday. So I've been to, in, in the last month. I've been to court twice, which is like crazy. I'm usually in court four times a week. And yesterday I was in uh, Polk County, Wisconsin, which is Balsam Lake, small little courthouse. And they had, mm-hmm. they had court, but I literally had to go in and sign a waiver. I had to go to a separate room. I had to check off all these boxes. I haven't coughed in a week. I haven't wow. been around anybody that coughed in a week. Oh, it was crazy. That's and then I went in there and we did the, but most of the time, Miles, what you do is, is you go to a site and there's a place in our courthouse 
where you go in and there's a camera, and then like the judge is on it. It's just like if you do one of those goofy uh, happy hours with your friends on the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the judge is up here, the client comes out in the you know can cups and stuff. Oh, and God. It's just it's it's pain in the butt. I just got a, <laughs> I just got a text a question for you from somebody a watcher. Yeah. They said if somebody can somebody get a DWI right now and be put in jail? Can, yes. they, can okay. they get out? Great question. Here's here's what's really happening though. Is I mean the police are pretty much told try to do as minimal damage to people, even if people screw up. So they're they're a lot of times the DWIs, it depends on how serious it is, whether you're gonna have to appear before a judge and get bail set. Most of the time they're just allowing you to get in, get booked, and then get out. Really? Yeah. So okay. but that but then you'll get a court date like probably sometime later in the summer. They'll give you a court date. So it's not it's not like pressing that you gotta get your stuff together now. So they don't still, still reach out to a lawyer though because if you're in that situation, what you can do, if, if, if you hire me, like for instance, the guy's going to come into my office tomorrow on the same thing. In the meantime, I will get him set up for treatment and everything. Oh, so yeah, we can done. get all that stuff yeah. done. So when the case gets called, we Pro-act. can pro yeah. yeah. So don't just sit on your case. But the, but uh, I'm not sure I'm answering the question there. Well, you are. You okay. Are. So you, they don't want, basically, they don't want people in the jail. They do not want people yeah. in the jail yeah. at yeah. all. Okay. You know, so. That, that's what you want. For, to prison's a little different. I don't know. I mean. I, I, I don't, man, I see, I don't really have any clients in prison. I mean, I've had a couple clients that I've, you know, had cases that are in prison now, but nothing that's really pressing where people are trying to get out. Jails, the jail itself doesn't want anyone in there. This doesn't yeah. mean by any means that go out and drink and, drink and drive. Don't do it. Because you probably still can get arrested. Well, right? I mean, think how limited your opportunities are without bars open. Exactly. You know, other than it depends on how late you and I are going to stay here. <laughs> but <laughs> if not, uh, oh, CD1 God. lives across the street. I'll go over his house. There's uh, yeah. like one up there. He bought a little house. He's great. I, I, <laughs> I've seen him in the window driving by. I'm great. sorry, Miles. What were you saying? <laughs> Mike Munson was on that 84 team. Oh, yeah, Mr. Not, Minnesota. Sorry. Yeah, Big sorry. Guy. Oh, he was a good I just thought guy. of that, too. But yeah, yeah, you ran no, that great restaurant up no, there. No, no, no. Italian no, restaurant. No, no, right. Love going there. So did I. Yeah, we don't want to. Mom, his mom, his mom worked there all the time. Yeah. Oh, I love going up there. Hey, right. I, I don't know about that location, but whatever. They, well, they tried hard. Yeah, it was good. It was good. I liked it. I liked it. I went there a lot. Reasonable. Yeah. You know, I love it. Yeah, those are all your boys. Class no, I know. Five. Sorry to segue off that. A great conversation <laughs> here. I just thought about the ADD. <laughs> so, is our George and Karen watching tonight? Oh, sure. it's like here's, here's your name. Here's the uh, here's here's the chance that my mom and dad are watching that. I will say it is probably zero. Yeah. Well, they can um, watch this again. They, well, they, they, but here's watch. what it'll take. It'll take. Uh, we have a friend that goes in and checks on them mm -hmm. twice a week. Um, I go there twice a week. My sister goes there twice a week. We can set something up so they can watch it afterward. Mm -hmm. But the fact for them to be able to actually figure out what anything on Facebook or any kind of technology, okay. they're just not okay. going to. But did they watch the Wheel of Fortune? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <Yeah. laughs> but speaking of football, Eric, you have a, a friend who's a coach in the uh, NFL. Uh, what uh, do you know? What could, do you know anything about what might happen? I know we have that's what we of... talked. Miles and I talked a little yeah. bit. So he, Miles, well, first off, um, we have two people just instant. In the last day, I got a call from, um, and I ended up spending half my day talking to both of them. Are one is one is Jeff Vile, who you know well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. who used to run uh, Fox Sports mm -hmm. in Minnesota here, and he wow. lived in, and he actually moved across the street from us, and we became real good friends. He's now the head of Fox Sports Detroit, which is like. It's like uh, Beirut, 1983. I mean, oh, they're great they're airport. Though. Have you been to that airport? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, airport. Well, that's awesome. That's that's why they're getting it's hit. Fair to, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why because they had a yeah, Detroit like, airport. That's the cause oh, of the, the virus. COVID yeah, 19. I so, was there about a month ago. So, so yeah. he's Jeff is uh, so his his Fox Sports people they do because the NFL does their own stuff. So he does the Tigers, the Pistons, the Red Wings. Yeah. And uh, well, they're all for major league sports. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. for See, sure, yeah. for sure. So they're they're. I mean, this thing that you're reading about now, he was telling me a lot about it. Is they're trying to get it to happen where the the all the major league baseball teams all go to Arizona. Mm -hmm. They all I heard that. and they just so they don't have fans. And then they there's 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 half of the teams are housed there. So each of the minor league facilities would house two teams. Oh yeah. And then they would just they would just drive the games, and every game would be on. Oh, team. that's like the cactus spring right. training. Right. Right. Yeah. right. And it, you know, and, and the other, I was really disappointed with the. So, so I'm yeah, sorry, they, they wouldn't have a, a counter grapefruit 
leave down in Florida. No, we would just no, all just there. there. No, yeah, okay. okay. because okay. they don't want to fly. Okay. Okay. So that's so okay. half the team's miles are already in Arizona. Okay. So the teams that are in Florida, like the Twins, mm -hmm. Fort Myers, would then pair up with somebody. Okay. And yep. they would just, so it's a two hour drive to everything in yep. Arizona. Okay. So and then insane. every game would be on TV. And it was like, you know, I was really disappointed to see Sue Han of the Tribune and just like, well, what happens if somebody gets sick? And what happens? If, I mean, it's just like, what if, what if, yeah, what if? Sure. It's nice. I mean, they're grown men. Yeah. They could choose to do whatever. And we got to get back. We got to get something to look gotta, forward to. We got to get yeah. moving. We get, yeah. we gotta, and, yeah. and so it's like, it's like, uh, you know, these memes that you get, you know, oh, Beyonce and LeBron and. Tom Cruise aren't very important anymore. Well, yeah, no, they really are. You know, I mean, yes, somebody, you know, the people that are getting us the mm -hmm. food and the people that are, you know, yeah. they're, but at the same time, when you're at home, you need something to look forward to. Oh. And it's like, we'll we need to be entertained, yes. right? So, that, mm -hmm. I'm, so Bile was telling me about that, but you, um, Gus Bradley, who uh, great for old friend of mine, we played college football together. He's a defensive coordinator of the Chargers. He used to be the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. He was just running on the beach. He lives in, uh, Newport Beach, and he calls me up, and uh, he's like, the NFL has no clue what they're doing, because they can't get the Players Association. The Players Association gets so many different ways of looking at it. You got, like, some guy that's on his fifth year, he's on his last year of his contract, a $10 oh. million deal, he wants to play regardless. Yeah. And then you sure. get some guys sure. that are like, until the locker room's, you know, until the locker room's 100% safe, I ain't doing anything. Oh. So you're, I mean, will there be 70,000 people in a stadium? I don't know about that, but uh, yeah, but they're gonna. I mean, there's just I don't know. So the NFL right now, Major League Baseball is further ahead in figuring out what they're doing mm -hmm. right now. I guess that's the insight I can tell you from talking to Gus. Well, Bradley. what about the union? Is well, that's the, the whole point. That's, that's what I'm yeah. talking about. The union. So wow. the thing is, cut the union can't get unified on what they want to do right. yet. I mean, the owners clearly want to do whatever they can to make money. And the thing that so baseball and NBA is a little different because they're guaranteed contracts. So if the NFL doesn't play. They're just like my business taking a hit, or no they way. just yeah, they're out. look at the advertising, the media revenue. Too. Oh, all this stuff It's crazy. It's well, that's a multi-billion-dollar industry. So all right. it, it, it's never, it, you know, it's, it, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's all right, let's just hope for the best. Yeah, for one the day best, at a right? time, man. You know, it's all we can do. Right. Yeah. It seems like the curve is flattening. I don't know. Yeah, I think well, it's clearly yeah. flattening in Minnesota. Good. Oh yeah, we're doing better. Well, we expect us to do better than. Well, that's just because we're Minnesota <laughs> nice. You know, that's all. <laughs> the big guy's got his eye on us. We, uh, we special. Do than the, well, we are. Than I mean, it's, it's, right? yeah, as I said, with with half as many cases to do, I've become a full-time or part-time epidemiologist. And we are, per capita, the lowest case level. The, our median it's amazing, death is exactly. unbelievable. Yeah, the the age, average age of death and stuff is like, it's... It's unbelievably safe in Minnesota. Right Which now. is all tragic. Mm -hmm. Don't get no question about it. But no. so I mean, but you know, a collapse in your economy is going to be tragic also. So oh. there's got to be a happy medium. Gotta, and it's got to happen fairly soon. We got to do a trial and error, I think, pretty quick. Yeah. Where we slowly let people back into the system. You know, maybe so many some people, people are going to die. Yeah, they're going to die anyway. Right. I mean, and I, and I want to sound like that, but but you know. there's a you know, like on the on the on the oh, let's go back. We'll bring full circle. A Stillwater, right? The great uh, late uh, Joe Samuelson. So when he was literally on the beach at Omaha, okay, he was pinned down and they were like hiding behind all the, I don't know what they call them, all the little barricades and stuff. Yeah, and the yeah, Germans the are fighting. And, yeah. and he was literally on the beach and you can, and you can look this up. It's it's a combination of two movies, like the Saving Private Ryan is the obvious one, but also the uh, the great old one, uh, uh, what was the one from 63, uh, The Longest Day. Remember the black and oh, white yeah. of The Longest Day? Oh, yeah. So Henry Fonda plays... Um, Theodore Roosevelt's son, and that's who Joe Sam was under. Really? And when they were pinned down, it's like they couldn't move forward or a lot of guys would have died. But as they were pinned down, they were getting guys picked off left and right. So he, so, yeah. so, so what he did is he said, hey, we're either, and his famous line was, there's only two kind of people on this beach, those that are dead and those that are going to be dead. Gonna die. So it's like he plowed ahead, and that's what Joe Sam was in. And, and it just, yes, you lose some people, but at some point, you know, you can't take, you can't let everything collapse. You gotta, you gotta do something. Yeah. Anyway. Wow.
Wow. <laughs> wow. We're yeah, getting deep now. I know. We well, went, yeah. went from sword and God to sacrificing God. people in the world. Well, that's a local guy yeah. we're talking about, though, yeah. Samson. Yeah. You know, you gotta, we got to pitch our locals. Oh, we sure do. And I think on Thursday, I hope uh, we have uh, Bob Beetle. Oh, our sports. Uh, great uh, softball coach. Softball. Oh, softball. We'll I, think, I think we're probably, we're probably ranked number one in the state right now. <laughs> yeah, softball. I know. But, I know. What well, a shame. Um, I mean, Miles and I have taken a couple road trips down to Mankato. That is by far. Isn't that a great scene? Oh my God, it's so it's fun. It's a great venue. And the, the, yeah. ath the athletes, those girls are so, the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. You know, the, they know how to bunt. They could, it's just, it was, oh, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. The fundamentals are just fabulous. And Beatles, yeah. great watching them, Coach. And He's uh, really hopefully we'll have him here on Thursday. And Erica will probably uh, not get too long here. We could go all night probably, which is okay. But well, I'm either going to go all night here or I'm going to go across the lunch house because I'm thirsty. So right. you can turn the cameras, cameras off the cameras and I haven't seen better in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll end it right there, guys. We'll see you Thursday, Eric, everybody. Thank you. Eric, thanks for uh, thanks, coming Eric. over here. Uh, we need a lawyer. Call have, Eric. Uh, more guests lined up next week. Thanks for coming over. Usually we only have six or seven uh, people each night. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I say that as much. Uh, and we're looking for Great job. Chad, uh, our mayor, to show up. Oh, he's a good job. That's another oh, he's busy. Yeah. He's, busy. Yeah. Yeah. he's a busy guy. And I like Thanks to rip for coming on over. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Yeah, Thanks a lot, Eric. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. That was good. That was good. That was fun.